I love foraging because it makes me feel like I'm connected to the land that I live on. It makes me feel like I can go outside and have an experience that's enriched by the world around me. I think there's something about picking a berry off of a vine as you walk by or digging a mushroom out of the soil that cultivates an excitement and an appreciation that I never feel if I'm buying food at the store. So today we're gonna pick rose hips, take them home, um, process and dry them, and store them for use in tea throughout the winter. All right, let's go find our rose hips. All right, so when you're looking for rose bushes, you're looking for a shoulder height, woody shrub. The leaves are gonna be what we call pinatally compound, which means that leaves occur opposite of each other all the way down one stem, as opposed to one leaf per stem. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine leaflets on this one stem. They're super thorny usually, and then depending on the time of year, you'll either see the buds, the flowers, or uh, the hips. And the hips are technically the fruit of the rose plant, and they're all in the genus Rosa. Don't know what species precisely this is. The rose hips are the fruit of the rose plant, and you might notice that when you look at a rose hip, it kind of has a little like butt on it and that is where the flower was so rose hips only occur if that specific flower got pollinated by a bee or some other insect during the season and i like to think of rose hips as basically being like an apple because they're all in the same family apple trees are in the rose family and they occur because of the exact same thing so the stem down here stem down here attached to the plant and then they both have this butt which was where the flower was attached and got pollinated, and then the fruit grows between where the flower was and where the stem is. Just kind of a fun way to think about them. Every time I do a harvest, I like to think about the, the what, obviously, the where, the when, the how, and even the why. So with rose hips, you can harvest different parts of the plant in spring, summer, and fall. But for the hips, obviously it's fall. Specifically, you wanna do it after the first frost because that's when their sweetness has really, all the sugar has flown into the fruit. Typically, roses like to grow in really wet areas. So we came to a riverbank today to find them, but you could also harvest from a local park or your own garden. In terms of the why, I think it's always really important to think about why do you want this plant? You know, we don't want to ever over harvest or harvest and then realize that we don't actually have something that we want to do with the plant. Um, so I know that I want to turn these rose hips into tea. The how of harvesting rose hips is super simple. Um, they pop right off the plant. I usually just kind of use my thumb to pop the stem off. I like to pick the the butts, <laughs> the leftover part of the flower off before I put them in my basket. You don't have to do that. And you're looking for ones that obviously don't look like they're starting to mold. You want them to still be nice and firm. If they're getting squishy, that probably means they're starting to um, decompose. All right, we've got our rose hips and it's time to head home. Pick off any of the remaining stems and flower buds on the rose hips. Then score around the rose hip with a knife, but not cutting all the way through the hip, just through the outer layer of skin. Then you should be able to peel off that outer layer of skin without taking the inner part and seeds with it. This won't work every time, and sometimes you have to peel off little bits at a time or use a spoon to scrape the seeds out of it. But if you have really firm, fresh rose hips, they should pop open like this most of the time. To be honest, this process took a good little bit of time. So I would definitely recommend asking a friend or someone else to help you with the process because it goes by a lot faster and is a lot more enjoyable. But if you like to do it meditatively all by yourself, more power to you. Seeing the full container of rose hips at the end and cleaning all of those excess bits off the table was so satisfying. 
You can absolutely make the tee using your fresh hips, but if you've collected any significant amount, you're going to want to dry the rest of them. We have a stacking tray dehydrator, but you could also dehydrate your hips on a tray in the oven on the lowest heat setting. It will just take uh, a lot longer. The rose hips were in our dehydrator for about three hours on the highest heat setting. Our rose hips are done and ready to go into an airtight container. I like mason jars or other glass jars so that I can see all the beautiful colors of the foods that I am storing. Mm, the dried hips smell like almost like dehydrated strawberries or some other really bright fruit. Don't forget to write a label on your stored foods. Rose hips are pretty easy to tell, but I've definitely not written labels on other things and then gotten confused about which herb I'm storing. For our tea, I'm using about a teaspoon, maybe a couple teaspoons of the rose hips. You can most certainly mix in other herbs or botanicals with your rose hips. Then pour boiling water over them and let your tea steep for at least 10 minutes, maybe even 20, to really let the full flavor of the hips come out. Mm, delicious.